Hello, everyone. Today's title is, t- uh, is titled. Today's title is titled. <laughs> Today's talk will be called uh, Stepping into Transcendence. And what that really means is that if you're a person who's living a life in which things are just, how would I communicate? You're living your daily life, you have an idea, you are an idea, you're working with ideas, and you're moving around as a temporal object. That is one way to give inspiration to your life force, which many people are doing. But when we talk about transcendence, it's suddenly that significance where throughout your normal day things, you as a human being, whoever you are, wherever you are, uh, you throughout your day are perceiving moments and you are life. You can study life because you are alive. And as you are alive, when your attention from all those things that you've been just letting happen as if there are other, you know, that's happening to me because of this, because of this. As long as you're giving existential responsibility to an external phenomena, you will see that uh, it's as if you're in different worlds where throughout your day only that one moment where you were still and you just had a very awesome moment in seeing something or a bird fly right in front of your face or something, you know, and you just saw that experience, you know, and you were still. And so it's as if uh, the moment our world is bur- uh, based on the movement of externality, uh, it's as if on some aspect we know, gosh, it's never external. Because there's always the silence that is, uh, in a sense, uh, Uh, letting the noise flow we must really see that uh, in your normal day life you will find moments where you will understand yourself more than you have understood before that is stepping into not transcendence yes yet but into a new state of awareness which is subtly changing the awareness you currently have. So what that means is it's like, for example, think of you being the most serious person and suddenly the most unexpected figure coming in front of you and doing the most hilarious thing. You will suddenly begin laughing and you will have no judgments because you don't know. And we see we can never judge the new, but it seems that the old, gosh, we have so many judgments on that because there's so many structures that are being kept. So throughout your normal life, it's as if Uh, You choose how much you want to see based on what you are at first, what you are considering the self to be. And so there must be an awareness here that some ideology will fade uh, when you are present in a more direct experience. So what that means is right now, if I tell you an apple, right? You can visualize an apple in your, let's say, subtler sense of thought, in your abstraction. Suddenly you're visualizing an apple in front of you. Now let me tell you, make this Newton's apple. Again, you see, oh my God, I can make this apple into more things, right? However, I tell you, now, uh, like literally bite an apple, you see that's not there. It's not as real, right? And that's because in your awareness to what is here, there is the multidimensional context that when you look out, it's objective. When you look at yourself, it begins to being subjective, but also it's as if all your ideas, all your new unique flow and design of all your ideas are kept by an existential awareness which your awareness can only come to in a sense of transcendence where the individual is discovering its individuality is based on everything else and so if you are based on everything else what is the basis of everything and so that is when you begin seeing wait a minute the search is no longer in words I'm no longer here being tested to give an answer this is the test of life how serious am I with the experience of what this life is there's one level of education which you gotta you know go through different stages and you get certificates and whatnot there's one level of education which began from the minute you were conceived which began from the moment of your birth your study of this life began when your eyes opened and trust me that's only in one plane when you realize that the essence of your vision is transcendent then everything could have always been transcendent all your problems of course they could have been problematic but with a greater understanding of the self they could have also never been there so you begin to see that man is given such free will that he is his own free education 
And so this movement is going and constantly in life from the beginning, you're getting more of a collective understanding on an individuality. That is self-awareness. Self-awareness is being in the room and suddenly realizing there's another room. Guess what? One world has integrated with another. And so we see that they're all kept in the same house, but who is the builder? And so our questions keep keep on taking us further in the sense that they break our realities. So ask questions so deep that transcendence is the only answer. And stepping into transcendence is, is that moment where you see, gosh, my whole life has been based on something. Let's say some idea, regardless of guilt, suffering, mistakes, and good things and bad things and advantages and disadvantages that you have. Just similarly, just, just in a second, just see that regardless of who, what kind of character you're in a story, you are aware that you are present. The most profoundest ability of the character is the knowing that he is. Why do you think we all keep seeing stories where hope seems to be the greatest step that man has when everything's lost? It's because the essence, the success is there. You don't go try to seek ambition uh, without seeing that you know it's real for you. If you know it's real for you, it doesn't matter how well you, you're trained in language, your communication will go through because it is not your communication. You're beginning to understand that the fruit of the tree was never a tree giving fruit. It was a life process. And so all your separate actions, all your separate considerations are all now present in the emptiness that is keeping them all here. And so you are the observance of all the objects of observance that seem to give you an idea that you are something. And so we must not forget uh, the, the madness and chaos that philosophy is very, very, <laughs> very kind of like in a not wanting to confront it way uh, in the proximity of. And what that really means is that we all have views on what the world is and what this life means. But if you see a human being who experientially his ability not his physical ability in a sense his ability in knowing and expression is greater in understanding similar to how for example let's say a child sees like a pilot let's say if i'm young and mr within in his youth suddenly saw a pilot for example you know you would see that inspiration would not make sense until you begin to see that you have the ability to fly and so your Many imagery has, be, has been your companion. Many images have been your companion in guiding you towards your greater sense of infinity. Because all finite elements, once they're given the ability to move, dissolve into an infinite understanding of their space. So what that means is we think we're actually situated on a planet in emptiness. No, 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 no. We are actually present in emptiness, but then are situated in subtle ways where we are keeping many realities which blend to then give us new. So what is novel is actually similar to you've started one design, you're also working with all the probabilities of the immediate design that is in your awareness. And so if all conception could come down and be suddenly in, in, in found in our meditative gaze on a, a candle flame, we begin to see that the flickering is similar to any movement of life. And so movement is movement. And we are thinking, oh gosh, we're human beings who are considering, uh, what do you call it? A sense of equality. We're looking for human rights. We want equality among human beings. Now, uh, are we really perceiving equality as explorers? Or do we, or is every human being, when you look around you, you know, maybe, maybe abundance, you know, maybe financially things are not same for anyone, you know, everyone. But uh, is every, if you saw that everyone could be an explorer, uh, and they were not exploring, what would you do? How would you catalyze yourself in your stagnation? Perhaps by the mere knowing that you were never stagnant. All causality simplifies into its own effect. So what that means is at first there's a cause and effect, but once you adjust and have be aware of your state of being and be self-aware to a point where ideology is at first leading but then ideology becomes a follower of what is known intuitively you begin seeing that in your let's say you're sitting down in the park and on a bench your contemplations your internal realities begin uh 
becoming more abstract. So if you want to see yourself aware, suddenly you will actually get a lot of extrasensory perception. But suddenly, after that, there's a reason that extrasensory perception come, has come. And there's a reason you have seen everything because you will connect that to the reasoning which will become your next moment. So you must understand that the nature of ideology is one where if man does not acknowledge it, he thinks he's the idea, he thinks he's a thinker. If he's not acknowledging his directest experience of the absolute reality. It's very interesting, when I was uh, observing to in our communication, in our most authentic communication to life, observe that action and learn from the self that is within all other. To find Mr. Within means to experience your ideology, your imagery in ways never before. And so many people think that again it's based on the external and so they may seek psychedelics and whatnot. They may seek other things, but you will see that it's not really, the, it, it's as if like the solution is a vertical dimension, but the problem seems to be horizontal. So the problem is sometimes irrelevant to the solution that becomes your satisfaction for your life. So if you've been thinking that, oh my God, this problem based on its structure, it should have a certain answer. No, some answers are greater states of being to your problems. You have, let's say, a depression, stress. These are not linear problems because you can't see thought. You know, you can consider it in how you communicate and how you receive communication. But again, uh, we must really see that our abstraction is at first uh, our, how we are perceiving the canvas, but then we'll see that we are putting the colors in the canvas. You know that, how crazy that is? It's like that experience where, uh, let's say you're, you're an audience, <laughs> let's say like this, you're watching a canvas and suddenly you see, it's as if someone's drawing, but you can't see who's drawing this canvas, right? And so you begin saying, gosh, look at the amazing talent, look at how amazingly this canvas is being drawn. It's like you're watching uh, the greatest artist you've ever known uh, draw something in front of you. And so you're just watching that canvas and the colors are filling up and the, so much depth, so much beauty, so much, uh, uh, everything you know in that picture and suddenly you begin to see who this artist is and you go look and you see that it was yourself but it was a self that you could not understand now similar to how right now we have a greater understanding of our past you know similarly it does not mean that our future has not progressed yet each moment gives you the projection because time is a consideration of the self-aware unit that associates with the body and so there is no, really not limitation or limitless, but infinite aspects from subtle to gross. And so as to gross, and as, as these are uh, observed, you begin to sing, gosh, life is not just good and bad. That is ridiculous. Uh, morality is not clear in regards to how it's existentially taking its vows. Morality is just the agreement of people, but clarity means to know the action before the action of even thinking what that is to know yourself before you can see yourself even. So that moment when you close your eyes after, for instance, let's say you close your eyes right now, you will suddenly see that knowing that you have, that there's a world when you open your eyes is what is energizing your reality. So that is more of a transcendentally situated knowing where you have trust in life. And so look at your life. You might be a person who might see that people are cruel to you. Life is giving you suffering and you are not privileged. But the only privilege that man has is self-awareness. There's nothing else. Because if you do not understand the value of how you are aware of this plane of existence, you will fall into uh, realities where it's as if your, your, your ability is being lessened simply because you are thinking that you are living in a world where you are in, incapable. Do not create incapability by not creating the imagery in an infinitely changing world. You have no idea what you're going to do maybe in two hours from now. And so we are so arrogant by the way we are thinking we know how to do everything in the, in the future. But in essence, we see that it's just how, how we are applying structure into maintaining our day. But the essence that is keeping our day is beyond our day. You, there, there are no normal days if you're living right. It becomes one of those moments where life was always here. It's just that you thought you were somewhere else. <laughs> yeah.
And so stepping into transcendence begins with you. And this is the same you in the universe as well. You will see that if you do not allow in a very fractal and integrative manner to observe your reality, you are just not giving yourself an ability to perceive in more collective ways. I mean, think about it. Your whole life you've been an individual, right? Now, what would a collective perception be? And that's where compassion really begins to be profound in giving you the existential understanding that self is with another. And so you will see that when those people who said one, life is one, that is not an easy word to say, <laughs> by the way, you know. So if for a human being it has become real for them that their self is within other in the sense that this relationship is a spectrum of observance in which we are then solidifying consideration, you begin seeing that the spectrum could never be judged. So what that means is regardless of uh, the type of sword I have and the type of enemy I'm fighting on the battlefield, I'll begin to see that it's as if the designer of this existence gave that color. It's like, I'm this color, I'm that color, and this is not physical color. This is unique design in how consciousness is perceptive, is observing even, is aware of itself. You must break all those ideas that don't serve you by not fighting them, but becoming still and silent and taking your trust into a different con context of conception. So what that means is, let me say it like this. Let, let's say I'm someone who I just had a debate with someone against every ideology I, I, I feel con comfortable with. You know, and let's say I just had, let's say the worst things happen to me. I would see that my environment, if I keep thinking in, this, in, the, in the proximity of the problem, uh, I'm gonna still see the problem everywhere, you know? So I understand that it's like, your acknowledgement of life can go from acknowledging that bench in the park to acknowledging uh, the view that is keeping you here, similar to how your side kept the bench here. You will begin seeing that all these things become profound because we've been keeping things linearly, but aspects of our intelligence are non-linear. And this is because we are, again, transcendentally and uh, situated and multi-present. When we're multi-present, that means our experience, our observance of our experience is not just influenced by this external reality. So when you're going throughout your lives, there may, things may happen where you might be like, okay, the things I've accepted about this physical reality based on all these scientific laws is not, it's not abiding. Why is it that my, my perception is changing? And you begin seeing that it's because man was never a stationary point. Every being is in their own platform of conscious view. And so you must recognize that it is how you are utilizing the ability to see yourself uh, dissolve again by being within all things. The reason I'm emphasizing this concept is because finding Mr. Within is one of those things where you're not finding anyone, <laughs> but you're finding everything. And so it's very important for us to be here when we're thinking everything is starting from there or somewhere else outside of us. To cultivate an understanding of here will even take you to that multidimensional uh, gaze which is the pilot's smile as the plane is as it is. I talk about a lot about advanced communicators and these are beings who are in a sense so aware of communication that they become transcendent in that way so what that means is the yogis in india they understood how to get into very high states of realization uh, by just the way their culture was and their text and writing and whatnot based on the information. But now, I mean, when you look at the West, you begin to see, okay, so the West is the difference because it has with the East is that it is, and it's more, it's like there's more of a co-creation of uh, ideas and let's say uh, imagery for desire. And so the world of the person living in the city externally is more um, chaotic than that person who's silently living in the monastery. 
And so the application of each must be different in the sense that Mr. Within will communicate. The monastery in, in his silence and his ability to just be in that silent state will perceive what is there in an instant. In other words, the intensity of his knowing will be so clear because everything is still and silent. However, when you say in a world where we're communicating, we need to become a new level kind of like yogis, new level mystics, new level realized beings in the sense that you know how like you're looking at your physical body and the trees and you're like, okay, I'm a being beyond this, you know, in the sense that you know it regardless of your interpretation. And you see that as you're seeing that, it's kind of like uh, you will see man does not need to be aware of just physical things but needs to become realized by becoming aware of his ideology thoughts and abstract communication so what that means is this is where uh, the uh, we need new mystics to develop new new senses of uh, uh, how would I say it uh, self-reflective consciousness technologies in the sense that In the sense that you begin to see that uh, your object of meditation is your communication that is your moment and so as the as the being as the human being in the Western part of the world and in, the, in this culture and society gets this realization that gosh I don't need to just situationally become aware of where the stuff is in my room I need to become aware of how my ideology is present that is a sense of push to take you to where you have been pulling yourself to your greater understanding and it is now time it is now time for your greater understanding <laughs> because it's beyond time and space it'll never be the time if you wait for it it is beyond time and space if you keep the imagery of your circumstance and your condition without realizing that you are the change not everything else in your environment is changing uh, you will in a sense Give yourself a way out when at first there was none because the program didn't seem to be written that way. You must always give yourself the ability to move through different states of being. So, so how Mr. Within playfully explains this concept is that imagine again everything you're doing externally here in a horizontal dimension. Now, everything I'm doing is a horizontal dimension. I'm going, I'm looking at the horizon, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a good day. And suddenly throughout the day again, let's say, uh, I suddenly see that bird again. <laughs> and this bird again flies in front and I'm just walking my normal day and I stop for a second. It's as if a new thing has occurred and my awareness to this novelty is a new being in regards to who I will be. And so, the intermediaries that one seeks will dissolve in form to then become a knowing that was present within you. What that means is that not, uh, you know how we pay attention to things? We're not the only things paying attention. Actually, you are kept here by the divine attention that is your own greater collective gaze. So what that means when I say collective is um, suddenly in that horizontal uh, realm of thinking, begin seeing a vertical dimension where uh, emptiness again is the door emptiness is the door to everything if you recognize this you won't let your ideology to be your ideology you will just be aware of similar to how you're aware of stuff in your room how you're going to park and you're aware of people and things similarly you'll also become aware of thought you wake up in the morning and your mind will be completely silent and suddenly if a thought comes you'll be aware where it's coming do you see do you see the intensity and the dedication we need in the advanced communicators and the pilots of consciousness and any being who's stepping into its own transcendence to develop systems where we can acknowledge this and create allowance existential allowance for not just us and everyone else our exploration and our communication is the value of this life process you are here and as you are here then you are there but you are here first then you are there there is silence then there is noise there is stillness then there is movement and this is at first how you work based on your conditioning. 
different beings could be situated in different realities and they might not need as much work, for example. Do you know? But there isn't something to be done like there's work done. This is not coursework. This is not, this is not homework. It's an absolute moment. And it seems that those are hard to find. So if you do find an absolute moment, let your knowing, as a, as a, as a moment of existence, let your knowing be present, be right where it is, without moving it, without touching, without thinking, without bringing a thinker, and then observe everything with everything. And so trend and transcendence will actually become the actuality of your natural state. We are transcendent beings. And so if we do not learn to, uh, in a sense, heal our communication, not heal our communication, but re re revolutionize our communication, uh, we, you know, it's as if every, constantly human beings are being born and the books they read are bringing the same imagery. We need to have renaissances happening every day. <laughs> Can you, can you see it? Competition is not something where two people are going for uh, trying to win a position or trying to get some kind of respect, you know? Competition becomes one where two aspects of the system are constantly enhancing the system and they're compassionately present with another. So what that means is you will see that sometimes your enemies and those beings that you compete with, you might feel that they are against you and they are against your life force, but actually no. They are the beings who are life has aligned for them to catalyze your life force. They are the challenge which you must confront. And I will tell you, in this life, guys, the greatest state of mind is the one to be able to handle any external challenge. So you want to walk in the day, not as if like uh, you're, you know, you're, you're trying to be a caveman who's trying to protect himself from wild animals, but just you're, you're, you're an able being. You realize fundamentally that this world is okay enough to enhance it. It's safe. We're not killing each other anymore. That's the only thing. That's the green light. Can you imagine? We, 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 we are not killing one another as much <laughs> as, as we used to. But now we have an ability where some beings can go into greater points of stillness. So what I mean by that, we could even say back in the day, let's say if there was wild animals everywhere, meditation could have just been that moment where you're just sitting down for a few minutes before you had to run for your life again. You know. So, <laughs> so it's very important to see that uh, it is our engagement with everything that is engaging us, which then shows us the understanding that was always disengaged. It is something you see in your life process. It is where the story sees the empty, where the character sees the emptiness in the setting because he's wondering about the storyteller, because he's become aware of the experience of the storyteller. There's some people who uh, believe in God in the sense that they say, oh, God, is, it, it's, it's up there, you know, and I'm just listening to him, so I'm going to go there, right? And they have the good boy mentality. But if you're always being a good boy, your good would never evolve. Your understanding of more goodness would not evolve if you're not going into uh, re realities where there's a fluctuation of your values. And so you will kind of see that there's some people who embrace the concept of God, again, just as an idea. And there's some who experientially open. The guy, the guy could be an atheist and he's just going through his life. And suddenly something happens that it's not the same God, and, uh, an old man in the sky, you know, with a white beard. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an experience. It's a moment where the atheist is realizing, gosh, I thought I was an atheist. Oh my God, there's so much more to the dimensions of experience. We are, we are assuming our sciences to be accurate based on very little existential awareness. Very little. Because we have not learned to confront the nothingness that will give us the transparency and clarity to integrate uh, our sciences with the science of its multidimensionality. So science is a certain angle and it has different dimensions. So what that means is science thinks it doesn't have the answer. Science is a form which moves you towards the formless because that is the nature of form don't think that you can be eluded it is just self-observance that is the most important crucial thing for a living being <laughs> and in the hopes that you perceive a gentle walk remember this is one of those things where if your whole life you've been doing things and you're trying to do things for others, you stop every event for any other person and you realize that you are giving yourself a moment to confront the self. 
you know? It is no longer one with a mirror on the wall. This is one where Mr. Within is shouting in the most chaotic way for you to look at your order. And also shouting in the most ordered way for you to look at your chaos. Because if you do not confront that which is within, you will constantly make an idea about it rather than moving into a direct experience where you're more able through your collective intuitive knowing and so thought is becoming a secondary thing similar to how we don't think about our breathing and it just happens. Your, the usage of your mind must become involuntary for you to have more of a transcendental exploration based on this reference point, which is this physicality. So if the mind is not transcendentally situated, you will see that you are creating an objective universe. It's like, yeah, the questions you ask are not even there. And so many gurus have seen um, many, how would you communicate it? Many gurus have seen many, many, how would I say it? Okay, <laughs> on YouTube, you, I saw a person ask a question from this, you know, guru, and these gurus are not, you know, they're not, some, not all of them, uh, but uh, are proficient in English, right? And so this guy asks a question, and you can totally see from the eyes of the guru and from the eyes of the question that there are different worlds. And the guy literally, based on his conditioning, cannot see the fact that before he's Bob, he is life. And when life uh, is, is not clearly present, then our illusion will become uh, the presence of a co-creation that is not seeing the whole picture. And so who likes to go to, to the Louvre and only see one painting? Who likes to go uh, uh, write a book but only write one page of it? You must see that you must continue yourself beyond the idea uh, that you have of who you are right now. Beyond Bob lies uh, a freedom that can never be dominated. It is, an, it is an existential awareness. And it's not a freedom like someone's gonna, you're gonna win the lottery, that's external. That's externally relevant. It's a freedom where you will know yourself. And self-understanding uh, is one where the minute you become aware, the intentions of life will also align. So you will begin seeing it's as if you are no longer searching, but life is taking you on a journey. And it's perhaps the greatest ride uh, in conception for the being who thought he was only one thing but <laughs> is actually no thing. I hope this talk has served you and you utilize all these concepts in your own way uh, to see beyond your limitation. You know, it's we don't have time for incapable people. Immediately become self-aware, immediately embrace compassion. You might not understand what compassion means because you might be living in a way where you might say, that oh, this is not compassion, this is not who I am. But you will see that compassion does not mean you have to change your ideology. Compassion is simply uh, the way you engage things, you are not interpreting. You are letting it be as it is. And so perhaps uh, even uh, that concept of action through inaction may become really clear. When you look at the stability of life, it's more than just uh, an external dance. Because there is a space that is keeping it all here. And so we will conceive greater spaces as long as we conceive, consider greater spaces. So what that means is, as long as man is saying there's something greater outside of him, outside of him, do you know? Uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a, uh, t there's turbulence. But when man says, uh, there's a greater sense of being within him. That is, <laughs> that is when it's more accurate. Because it is not trying to interpret the unknown, but simply communicate how in an integrative world, the nature of things is simultaneously present. Reality is kept uh, by many views that spiral into your greatest sense of being. And once that drop falls from the leaf, it will understand where the river is heading. <laughs>
because once a drop merges with a river, it always knows where it's going. Much blessings and Namaste.